Hello, good evening to everyone. So we are here at Linea Pelle now and together. We are the fourth edition of our uh, social community talks. So welcome to the community and welcome again to all the people that subscribe for the full time and so many new people that subscribe to, to be inspired. So when I, say, when I say to be inspired, because this is our mantra, but this week our mantra was also dedicated to color. And I like it to tell this now because for all the week you've seen that we have an invasion of colors and we ask it to uh, all of our community to react to the color of the resilience. And we also ask it to several designers, artists. And let me tell you that we have thousands of thousands of vision, expression, reply. Wow, that's so what this means that we propose sites. Uh, that means that the global community right now uh, want to learn more. So, but which is the topic which is treated by, let me say, introducing our today's speaker. We have two speakers, Carolina Calzada Oliveira, which is a co-founder of Calzada Fox. And also we have Justine Fox, which is the co-founder of Calzada Fox. They are with us today. Uh, we, they are in UK, in London. So I give you a little bit uh, tips about we, which is the location tonight, which is Italy and England. So the topic, it's uh, really a new color language. So a virtual communication on colors and also materials. So let me give the virtual room to Carolina and Justine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very happy to be here with Linia Pele and uh, the community that uh, this uh, huge organization brings together. Thank you very much, Orieta, for inviting us and to talk with us about color. And as you know, it's one of our favorite subjects. So um, today, when we start to talking about how is our lives after quarantine and all of us being working from home, some of our clients they have been tell us about the face-to-face -face communication, how things have changed now they, they have to do this face-to-face -face communication through the virtual environment. And um, thinking about it, perhaps what we all have to do is to adopt a new presentation methodology and uh, looking forward to pro uh, enhance our products and create a different engagement with our audience. For this, we was talking about, especially when it comes to present materials or products, how difficult it is to understand uh, something that you used to do it through body language and now you have to do it through a screen. And uh, for, uh, for our company or for any other companies, I think it's very important to focus in different areas. The first area I would like to speak is about image engagement. We all use mood boards, mood boards that we explain with our expression, mood boards that are physical and we take with us. But when it comes to a virtual environment, we have to start to thinking about the perception of color and textures. And some of the questions that we can ask to ourselves is, what is the presentation of color and textures and how is the point of view for the viewer? Can she understand the difference between my products or are I doing justice to my products? justice to my products online. Through that, we think in, in Calzada Fox that it's very important to look into color and psychology knowledge. And as well, a new concept that we are introducing today and later on, Justine is gonna talk to you about it, which is color in contrast principles. How to evoke connection through color and how we can communicate our products when we're looking into a visual screen. It's, uh, I know, sometimes changes are difficult and as well for me that I am a very uh, a person that I am Spanish but I am living in England English is not my first language sometimes it's very hard to talk when your body language is not the one is ruling the conversation for that as well I think it's very important to pay attention to the words 
And as we say in, in the fashion industry now, less is more also with the words in build our presentation. Think, over, think about your strategy when you present your products. Think about how product names can change and relative and give you a description of what is the colors of the products or these textures. Specify the colors and uh, remember always that when you go through reference of nature, sometimes if you are talking with a different culture, it wouldn't work. We have been seeing this for many years when we have been working with color. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, Justine and I, we have been working in the color industry for the past 14 years. So we have been seeing many times how culture can play a big role when it comes to naming any type of products. And sometimes when you are referring to pink and you're thinking in roses, in other countries they will thinking in orchids and so on with many other colors. Then when I have been visiting Linea Pele on the past, uh, we see as well how collections are presenting through tones. You put your browns together, your yellows together. When this comes into a virtual reality environment, you have to think in that perhaps two colors that they are very similar, they will not work together when you are presenting to them. So it's important that you be careful and you understand resolution of the screen and how is the difference between the eye and the screen. Contrast, as I say, is a very important topic. And for this reason, Justine is going to talk to us about it a little bit later. But um, other important thing to communicate is the story. We all like stories. We all uh, like to present in through emotional connections. And now, more than ever, we still being humans that now we live inside of the screen when we talk to our clients. And for this reason, it's very important that you create a little story around your products. I can tell you many little stories about why Justin and I, we have been engaged with color over the years and how our backgrounds are very different, but we still have the same belief and thoughts. So that's the type of uh, essence that you need to put when it comes to virtual communication and you want to communicate a product. Moving yes, on. So, uh, okay. So yes. Now you will. Now I want just to, to explain you why I, uh, we put a discharge living in virtuality. So I like you to interrupt you sometimes to open the conversation that today we don't think that our future will be completely virtual, but we think that virtuality will help through the color. So what Carolina and Justine will introduce in a few minutes, showing uh, the contrast of color will give some examples. Yes, it's true. We are not going to live completely in virtuality, but I think it's very good to understand a little bit the connection that you can do between the showroom or the uh, stand and exhibition in the fair together with your presentations, because it's true. Sometimes you want to one introductions. I have been doing a lot of direct sales over the years, and sometimes these introductions that used to be based on your personality. Perhaps these first introductions is the ones they're gonna take a space more virtually. So that's why I think it's very important to get this subject grounded and develop your methodology in order to be presented to after take things, perhaps to a physical meeting. Justin, would you like to add anything? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree with you from, um, from a, a lot of what I've been reading that, um, the importance of the virtual world is is growing and um, you know it's something that we've talked about that we've been talking about in the trend industry since we began in the trend industry kind of uh, 15 years ago when we were talking about second life and and um, what's what I feel is a shame is that uh, the virtual world doesn't seem to have progressed as much as we'd hoped or expected um, but it's it's still a time for opportunity um, and I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, you know the the challenges that that we face 
by um, moving from physical meetings into virtual meetings, which we're all trying to catch up on now. Um, it's, it's not going to take away from the joy of meeting somebody face to face. But just a few points for you to consider of the human versus the digital. Um, I mean, the human eye is an incredible piece of uh, technical um, engineering, and it gives us incredible clarity and resolution in picture quality. I was reading that, in fact, um, our eye uh, has a resolution of about 576 megapixels in comparison with the best, most wonderful super camera, which only comes in at about 250 megapixels. So you can see straight away that there's this difference. Um, in terms of uh, the eye, people think that we see colour with our eye. We don't. Um, what our eye does is it captures. All the actual work in colour terms is done in our brains. And in the same way, a similar way, a digital camera, that's what captures your image, but it's down to your software as to what colour you see. So you can see there's kind of a, a similarity there. Um, in, in the same way, all our screens uh, on all our devices are calibrated in a different way. So. I guess what I'm trying to get across to you is uh, this beautiful slide here uh, that we see as blue, orange, white. What I'm seeing may be very different to, to what you're seeing. Uh, we also need to acknowledge things like colour deficiencies. So, for example, around 1 in 12 men and around 1 in 200 women will have some sort of colour deficiency uh, in, in their vision. Um, at the same time, as we age, our eyes, uh, our eyes change. So um, the liquid inside our eyes gets, gets more solid and uh, less light can get in our eye. So it gives the impression that things become bluer. Now, this is another thing to consider when you're thinking about an online world. Um, the blue screens of all our devices have been uh, put down to interrupting our circadian rhythms and contributing to uh, many mental health problems, obesity, diabetes, those sorts of things. So to counteract that, we've seen an increase in people uh, using protective screens on their devices, which will make things appear more yellow. So you have a, a lot of these things uh, going on at the same time. Um, so really, one of the key aspects that I think we can take from the physical world into the virtual world is this idea of visual ergonomics. So what I mean is how we perceive the functionality of it. And uh, Orietta, I made um, a couple of slides uh, to just kind of to illustrate some of these um, contrast issues. Contrast is one of the key problems. Now, um, obviously talking mostly about leather products, one of the key colors within leather is brown. So I put together a few browns for you to um, have a look at. Uh, so you can see the kind of contrast. Now, as you go from that one to the next one, you can see this is how a person with one of the types of uh, color deficiencies would see it. I've changed I've swapped out the triangle now to give you a little bit more contrast and you can see that it stands out a little bit more, but you can see this circle is still quite difficult to um, distinguish. And so again, I've moved that to a slightly lighter tone. So you've got these levels of contrast and I think you'll have the next slide now, Orietta. And there you go. So you can see that those three colors now um, much more easy to um, to distinguish. So, if, if thinking, staying within contrast for one second, uh, thinking about how we can um, take some of the best practices from the digital work, from the physical world, and and apply them here. Um, within things like uh, web design, you would be looking for a. Um, a contrast that's no less than 4.5 to 1 or in the physical world we would talk about light reflectance values and um, if you want everybody to see the contrast you'd always look for a 30 point 
uh, difference. So when you're thinking about the photography, the imagery that Carolina um, mentioned earlier on, keep the background very simple, keep it one colour, uh, keep that contrast. Perhaps, uh, especially if you want to show some browns, um, reduce down the amount that you're showing in one image, keep it really strong. Use the colour background to accentuate the um, undertones of the browns that you're showing so that people can start seeing some of those differences. So that's really what I had to say about, about the contrast part of it. Um, and then I think we went on to um, the emotional connection. I think that was the next slide, was it Orietta? Unless you had any questions on that. Yeah, so let me, let me say now we are in the emotion connection, but let me just give you already some of the questions that we are receiving because I like to be a little bit more fresh and interactive. So it's very interesting that you show to us the contrast of different tone on tone of uh, color in greens and browns. Uh, all this kind of reddish browns or blue browns. So um, one of the question is really like this, how can we combine? So now you put uh, the contrast with the lighter circle, but can we also work on texture? So color and texture can also play a game in a virtual effect, uh, enhancing the emotion to see the content to see the feeling. What do you think about this? I, I think, um, actually, I, I'm not sure if I explained the slides um, well enough. The, the browns, the warm browns, um, there were three of those. And then the greener tones were what somebody with a, a visual deficiency would see. So it was just, yeah, so that's how they would see that one. <laughs> And, and you can see that you lose all the color and it becomes this very different thing. But um, we, for me, with the texture and materiality of it, uh, when you're photographing, it's, it's the lighting. Or if you're um, another great way to express that idea of materiality and, and for people to see uh, the various aspects of the color is to use video when it, in your presentation in your virtual presentations so that people can see the handle and the feel of it and it almost connects that uh like a, a motion that people could imagine that they're the ones actually that, handling it exactly sorry to interrupt you justin but also i think uh, that's when we talk about when we talk about color and when we talk about textures mm -hmm. uh, if you think about it it's also about how you present the story use your words to define the textures and the colors and put everything to live together within a mood board or without a presentation, then everything connects to each other. It's very important for you to understand the contrast. And uh, um, this is something that through color theory or talking with a consultant, you can, you can find out more about it for particular products. But it's also very important and you have your story right. Mm -hmm. And the story communicate the texture and the product is the way you define and you use these keywords in order for the other person to be able to see it. Because as Justin said, when you are um, playing in an environment then you don't know the resolution of the screen of the another person, and you don't know if that person has any type of uh, uh, visual difficulty, it's very important that you support colors with the words and then you support your story to be cohesive. And it, it goes from, not only just touching the colors, but touching the textures and touching the, the reason of the product. I know this is, uh, for example, if you have a big collection, it can be complicated, but probably is uh, a very good start point is looking into col uh, product names, especially for leather. What kind of uh, names have you used it and if that describes the product. Then you have your videos, you have your photography, you have um, the understanding of the color contrast of the screen in order to bring it alive. But it's also very important to create a story and a communication way that describes these colors and describes these colors in a global environment. 
not just referring to trees or referring to leaves, then perhaps they are very specific for your area. It needs to be a bit more extensive and looking into the global picture of what people understand by different names. So can I just try to be very practical, like giving insights that could be in leather, but it could be also in a metal or plastic or uh, different typology of material. You mean you have the color and then be, be so close to the colors, maybe the color swatches, you can have a name that define the name of the color and maybe a few images that the images refer to the quality of this color. So everybody culturally can get the point. So it can be something like this to be more, uh, let me say practical. <laughs> yes. in a, in a easy way. Yes, if that's what you want to do, and this it can be, become a mood board, that's a very good way to start it, especially because when you build up this uh, presentation, uh, you will become closer to your product in a different way. And you will be seen from the third point of view, like uh, I am really communicating. It's very important to have clear the questions. Who is your client? Why they want the product to be used for? Um, is this something that I want to present it for a specific reason or is something that I just want to do to present my global products and my expertise? When you have that information clear, you can go keywords, color and textures, and also, as Justine explained with the circles and, uh, and uh, the triangles, the position that you play different aspects on this board in order to create contrast. It's not just a about building contrast with different products. It's also building contrast with the background, the background on, on the back that I have, the background that I use on my screen. It's very important to um, have a clear idea of how everything combined. I know we are very strong with branding and colors, and that's something as well that we teach to companies to understand better. But think about that the hero is the product and you want to present it. And as a hero, you have to create all the environment and all the story behind for sewing it up in the best it's with the it, tools that you have. It's definitely about building, building the story and just going back to the kind of uh, element of contrast as well and, and best practices from, you know, say web design or something. Uh, you see that they use calls to action in colour, but they will always back them up with words. And, and that language element is so important. Um, you know, research, uh, there's quite a lot of research into linguistics, into language and how we perceive colour as well. And, um, you know, I remember reading years ago that nowhere in Homer's Odyssey do they ever refer to blue for example, because it, it just wasn't in the language. So when he describes the sea, he describes a wine sea. Um, and, and so our language is intrinsically linked with how we perceive colour. And they can see now that we respond much more quickly to a colour name that will include a basic term like blue or say pink. But then when you add the emotion into it and those references and you can take people on this visual journey and that's what they really connect with and that's what excites them about it. It's, it's almost like um, when you're in the physical world, you can always, as you're developing the conversation with your clients, you can go and grab another sample. And, but in the virtual world, it really needs to be beautifully curated doesn't it it's it's almost like a, a film if you if you imagine one of my favorite films um the tom ford uh, single man the most wonderful use of color in that where they change from warm to cool tones you can see what position of his life that you're in and you can take your clients or your potential clients on this wonderful journey just by these types of colors that you you take them through it, it's almost thinking of that in the mindset isn't it it's it's this journey exactly exactly yes no matter which platform you use if you are using a new marketplace online or if you are using something like how we are using today zoom the story and the engagement and the sideman need to be there and need to be a correlation between colors and uh, 
and words is what we was uh, early on when we was doing preparation for this talk we was talking it's not the same thing to say light brown than they say brown mocha latte mm -hmm. you know you have a completely different description of the color and that's what you have to work with and that's the audience and you have to investigate it, how they are their understanding and the wording and how, what can go you know, not just uh, for your local environment, if not for a global presentation. I hope this is helpful. <laughs> yeah, can I, can I jump inside? Because in the meantime, I have so many, let me say, questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you have very short sentence before to get inside, I'd like to, to, to read live the question. One is this. For a shiny surface brown leather, what's the best background color? Because we assume, and it's an answer for others, of course, uh, we need a right name, we need a night nice story, we need to build the, the right journey. But many times in material, we have the contrast between shiny and matte. So which is the right background in this case? I, th I think if you, if you want to um, accentuate and express that sheen, then to build the contrast, you would use like a very, a very matte background. Um, some of my kind of favorite contrasting colors are some of these colored neutrals, like a, a lavender gray, like a blue background. Um, and you have that kind of complementary tone. It depends on the story that you're telling as well. So I'm always a little bit hesitant to say, oh, one color fits all, because it depends on the emotion that you, you exactly. want to talk about. It's very easy to um, get people to respond positively to a beautiful, harmonious collection of colors, but to get them to go, oh, I like that color is, is quite difficult. You can move okay. your backgrounds okay. from the colors that I'm just think have the little uh, the light colors like lavender or beige. You can move the leather through them, and then uh, people can see on the screen how the shiny react to the different color in the background as well, helping them to see the mobility of the shininess. Mm. With with the gloss um, colors as well, if you if you take uh, if you borrow from the automotive industry, you see that they they always show their glosses in uh, like formed shapes as well. So it's also like don't just imagine your product as like a two dimensional thing. You know, you you can drape it over something to give it life, and then it will capture more of the quality of the the color because. Colors are never just brown, you know, it, it will be, it will have all these wonderful undertones to it and, and that's what really leads your story. So great, so I, I really would like to go through your emotion uh, aspect, but I have another list of questions and I will give you uh, a little later. So what about the emotion in this beautiful picture that Justine shared uh, with us, color language. Yeah, so I, I just put together um, three images and um, it, it's almost like perhaps, perhaps I don't really want to say much over them. I just, I would really like you to kind of go to your full screen or I, I'm not sure what devices obviously you're, you're viewing this on, but, but to get as much of these images as possible. And I, Quite often, it's quite nice for you to um, just relax and just kind of like feel these colors and see these color shift. I'll say a few words, but um, you know, with this, you can see that there are like three separate, very neutral, very light colors. This kind of stone concrete in the foreground with the like brushed gold surface. And then right at the back, that kind of light, airy green, white. And it gives you this, this very fresh, organic feel. Uh, maybe the next slide. 
I was concentrated in your picture and I was and dreaming. I, you know <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I wanted to show you this one afterwards because you can see some of those same tones from that first image you can pick up here. So you still got those very light, natural, organic, soft greens in there. But this time they've started to kind of ramp up the energy a little bit with this vibrancy of orange that we've been kind of, um, the forecasting element of our business has, has been seeing this becoming more and more important into um, the interiors and fashion market may be driven by that idea of, uh, you know, some frivolity, some fun, some, something that really kind of like boosts our, boosts our energy. But again, I just wanted you to see going from that one to this one, even without words, gives you a very different story. And look at the way that these, um, these are architectural uh, um, window coverings actually but you look at the way that she shot them. She hasn't shot them straight on. She shot them at an angle. So you can see all the quality and detail of that weave in there. And you can see all the beautiful tones of color. So even though my screen might be seeing something different, we're all getting that kind of similar emotion. And then yes, I just I one more. Oh, do you want to say something, Carolina? No, I think that it's very beautiful a way to show textures, which I think is also a problem when you're working in color on color, which is two colors or two products and they have the same color. It's very interesting that you don't think in just on flat, as Justin was saying before. Think three-dimensional when it comes to the virtual environment. That's great. You can That's carry great. on now. <laughs> I like um, it and then there was this final one, which again, picks up some of these colors from this original image and instead of the orange now we've taken it to this like beautiful like luxurious tones of these kind of peacock lichen uh, um, greens in there and again you've got this very different feel you've still got those touches of brass in there of the brass metal and um, but it's the way you you pull it together the way you pull your collections together and um, that you know it it takes really tight editing and sometimes don't be afraid to just show one big image because people need that relief especially if you're looking at lots of busy images sometimes you just need a, a little bit of space to talk so i i really want uh, just all the really luxurious images. I love so much the way you define the color because I want to introduce some of the questions. So really, I, I wish I can read all the questions that we are receiving. But of course, we have one which is very connected with some of these images. So what kind of photo lights it's better to use to shoot a letter for an internet presentation? Cool lights? or warm lights. So I like, I like to say this because looking at these images, I can see that you have a lights on the background. Sometimes it's cool, so colder, and some, some other is warmer. Is there another aspect that they have to take in consideration? Mm, I, I, I would say so. That Colored light is incredibly important. I, um, in my working space, I have, uh, some of the um, color changing lights, which I use uh, on a daily basis, because they do make a huge difference to, to the work you're doing. So for example, um, in a, if I'm doing color work, I will tend to use quite a blue light um, that kind of, that um, it mimics like midday sun basically. So, so it gives you that kind of height of blue light that we were talking about a little bit earlier on um, in, in our circadian rhythm. It keeps you focused, it keeps you alert, um, and it really helps with concentration. So it's quite energizing, blue light. So it's not, it's not, it's still a white light, but it's got that coolness, say a, a cool light. Um, but again, as we keep coming back to, it's the storytelling 
what story are you trying to tell? If you're selling me a leather for a luxurious old armchair, well, new armchair, but you're looking for that gentleman's club, then for that to be sat within a stark blue light is going to cheapen it and it's going to uh, add more glare to the photograph where well, really you want it to absorb some of this warm amber light and um, amber lights are the ones that uh, start us to go to sleep so as the sun starts to go down and we get those beautiful sunsets this is this amber light and so it immediately makes us feel more relaxed so the lighting is really important and don't forget actual colored lighting as well <laughs> that can uh, create incredible like uh, surprising elements if you want to put something that's really intriguing um, and is going to add to your visual story then some of the colored spotlights and and where it interacts with the um, pigment colors can create some really surprising interesting you want to hold your viewers interest yeah so let me ask you again another part that I think I got, I got your answer, but do you suggest any frame around the color tone, which, you know, putting a frame sometimes can also block the color inside, and sometimes we can also have some deterioration. What, what do you suggest? Because looking through the images that you are showing to us, we don't have frames, but which is your suggestion? With, um, with the more kind of lifestyle images, you see like this one that you've rested on now, because it's like such a macro image as well, you can get real detail of the texture of it. So you can, you can really kind of touch it. Um, but it doesn't show you uh, your materials in relationship with each other. So perhaps you want to start building a story and you want to show those stories as different elements. So then I would say picture frames would be nice. It, it, what, um, what I think is uh, that I've learned over the years in terms of presentations and, and how you, because we do a, a lot of our work virtually anyway, and how you talk about it is that you have a pace and a rhythm to your presentation. So you will have, um, some elements like details is always really nice to put just in a frame so i i would say that did you did you have any yeah no, I, great for the answer. carolina do you have any yes, suggestions? i i think i'm uh, i agree i think frames is if you have a very specific uh, story to say and you want you to bring the focus to any particular um uh, material also as well we are looking to very creative pictures perhaps you don't have that type of resources so then it's as well about to look the material that you have because perhaps if your images are not on that level you need to make them to look a bit more interesting and perhaps then frames can can play a good role it's depending and yes you have to looking for always the piece and the rhythm and the story that you want you to say it, it gives you the opportunity then as well to uh, perhaps like make suggestions of coordinating kind of color materials with your client as well so that you you could show one image and then as you click through you're just showing some different backgrounds um, which is quite a nice way to as you would have done by hand, you can kind of do it visually on screen then. So I think then a, a frame box uh, would be quite nice. So I think I want to, I really want to give you this tricky question because you know black, <laughs> black is one of the, the color that is most, most requested. But how can you manage black virtually? Because in this case can be really tricky. When I use tricky, it's, it's quite hard, but it can also offer some challenge. What do you think about? Mm. Um, yes, no, black is a tricky one uh, because it, it, it absorbs so much of the light. Um, so again, it's, it's putting black in context with 
other colors as well. I think that would probably be the best way to explain it. I mean, obviously excellent photography is, is going to help you. And the best way again to, to show black is at some angles, some curvature, something that will, whatever uh, light reflectance that material has, you really need to capture it. Um, also in the, in the description of your black as well, because no black, well, hardly any black, apart from something like Vanta black, is actually black. It's always got um, some amazing undertone to it. And, and you put all the blacks together and, and you see this uh, wonderful rhythm. So I think your language uh, of how you sell that black and you pull out of those elements of it is really important when you're talking about something that I know in the UK it, it accounts for like over 70% of, uh, of apparel sales. So, you know, it, it's, it's an incredibly important, important one to talk about. But I guess yes. you pick up on the other qualities, don't you? Exactly. I think it's very important to spend some time with your products and when you have a collection, like it's a black collection, to look through them and to find the undertones and to understand what is the composition, as Justin say, in order to bring up the words. Uh, because otherwise um, it can become many, very monotonous to present blacks into something virtually. Mm. Yeah, to look at through the composition, the undertone most of the time can highlight a different typology of, of black. That's true. It gives so, it personality, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. So can I just jump in, a, in the other topic? Because I think, wow, we have a lot, a lot of questions as well. But I will read again at the end if you have some more time to dedicate to us. But for sure, uh, so we, we got the point that we can also make profitable the business through rituality and color. So I think I assume this because you, you were talking about so many data, but how can we connect the business aspects? So attracting and making a reaction of buying to our client through color and virtuality, which is your opinion? Definitely it's about building your story and uh, creating a, a story that the visual communication is parallel with the verbal communication is very important. I think everything in marketing is about to find the need of your customers. And I think if you're thinking about this sentence, then for many years we have been talking about it, uh, it's the same thing for virtuality. Looking up, looking on their needs sometimes means giving something to excite them, something that they feel more emotional connection. And that's something that with color we can achieve very easily because with color you can play with other elements and today we have been, uh, been talking, but we also do uh, for our customers, which is color psychology. Play with the idea of dance to understand and connect with dance emotionally through the understanding of color psychology and not just the contrast of colors. You can uh, uh, create a description of your products telling us the story, but there is always this uh, idea that when you go to buy a car, you always have been entitled to buy the, the red Ferrari and not the white one. So you do the same with your products. Use colors from your collections and excite them and make them feel more emotional connections because that's what is going to bring you the business into the table. After when you close the business, they can go into a different palette into colors then perhaps for them will represent more cells, but you need to show them the red Ferrari first. What do you think, Justine, about it? Do you have anything else to add on? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I absolutely uh, agree with the, you on the importance of um, psychology, especially um, as we're talking now, in, in the wake of, um, of the COVID crisis, you have a, a global community who are experiencing a huge emotional shift all at once and um, so as well as the color psychology we have the the color symbolism that this brings along with it and so it you know it's a, a wonderful um, time of, of being together as well so it is that element that I think is is also really important with color and um, 
and, and taking people on, on this journey. It, it's also um, a really interesting time that, that you could also be planning your next collections. Uh, we're working with what we have now and how we make it work in the virtual world, but perhaps as we go forward and we look at how we develop our colours, um, we, we look at colours that we know are designed to look as fabulous in the virtual world as they do in the real world. And perhaps this will take us on to some like different colour choices. So I, I'm quite interested to see how we can develop these themes uh, as, as time goes on, as we become more used to, um, to the virtual world. And, and the experiences within it. Exactly, because it's true, and this is maybe it's, uh, very personal, but how difficult is to choose what you are gonna wear when you come into a virtual presentation? You know, it's like a, how much lipstick I can put that I don't look bad enough, how, what color will be my garment? So it's true, it's a, a huge opportunity. If you try to be more positive, positive and uh, I, I was listening to their podcast about school bomb positivity, how we have to be positive through these times. And maybe it's, that. it's a very good business opportunity in order to design products that help us to communicate online and not only thinking about what will happen next. Enjoy the times. We are living a very exciting moment. We are probably going to be a generation that everybody will remember. So make your mark as a designer and don't get stuck in uh, the old ways to think. Embrace virtuality make a product and it suit the market and then when the time comes and we go to the streets and we meet for coffee surely we'll be in a different way our social behavior is gonna change completely you know the way we kiss or we salute a person it will change so why not we can change the way we perceive fashion or the way we perceive design so i want to now introduce in a certain way uh, introduce another element which is communicating online through colors and material also means to give your personal trends i assume this your personal your personal idea so maybe not following some something else because you are talking about the characteristic and the authenticity of your product so can this be connected with a couple of examples or questions that I receive right now. So which they ask first, the color in the next seasons will be more strong or more soft. So if I think what you said positive, what does it, what, what do you think about more strong is positive or more soft is positive, which is your idea around this? I it really depends on the on the product, uh, Orietta. If you if you look at what happened to colour um, in design and fashion uh, after the two thousand and eight global crash, which obviously this is a little bit different, but you look at the colours there and um, the spring summer season for Milan, Paris, New York, London, uh, that season before, everything was vibrant, like high chromacity, it was loud, it was proud, it was joyous almost. Um, you look at those exact same shows, those exact same designers for the spring summer the season post the crash. Now all of those colors are absolutely there, they're all there, but you see that the chromacity, that vibrancy has been drained out of it. So it, it takes it to much softer colors. You still have some of that vibrancy, but the vibrancy starts to show itself in embroideries, in embellishments, in smaller, cheaper items and so i think it really depends on um on how long we're in this what economic situation we come out of it with um but there there are a lot of people who are focusing on on like color groups in the yellow area for example simply because sometimes trends reflect 
the situation and sometimes trends are the antidote to it. So if everything's going on and it's terrible, we need that yellow, that optimism, that uplift to uh, balance us out almost. So can I can I also jump here because I don't know how this happened, but I think it's the feeling because sometimes you anticipate uh, you both the questions that are coming up. So if and I know that you are not reading because you are concentrated to speak with me. So <laughs> I love this question, which is what the wrong color not to present after the lockdown. So which is the color you don't have after to present after lockdown? So this is your part. Black. <laughs> I, I, I think it will depend very much on uh, the, the product that you're talking about, but definitely never bring a color that it gives a negative connotations. Never bring a color that it means to be um, Encarcelated or imprisoned, which is how some people have been calling the lockdown. Make a color that in, interpreted our uh, um, willingness to share and to be part of it and be all together. Together is probably the word that have been, been using more in tax. So use a color that brings that type of closeness. We were talking about the colors of resilience with the linea pele, and uh, each of us we choose different colors for different reasons. I really, I like very much the, the color that Justine chose, that maybe she can talk a little bit about it, because that's probably a color that it will come up, but the opposite will be a completely uh, color that makes you feel impressionated. What do you think, Justine? Which is the color that you will never talk about it? Um, I, I was kind of thinking about it in browns, like, like what browns, and, and um, instinctively, I didn't want to see any traditional uh, types of browns, those red browns, um, but but there is a school of thought that that says that you know when times are tough, we want something that is is reminiscent of childhood almost. So so something that would um, remind us of being little. So I I guess like uh, in the UK it would be something like toffee, like toffee a, was a big childhood. So y you would you would um, engage with those kind of uh, colours that are symbolic or, or have connections with kind of like comforting food or um, something like cocoa butter. That those kinds of like elements. Um, Caramel, yeah. Yeah, those types of colours. But then the the rebel in me, the um, person who wants to play with colours, I would like to see some real futurist browns, if I'm still sticking with browns. Um, so I, I would like to see like brown being taken to another level and something quite experimental and innovative. Um, so I, had a, I had an email from um, a student actually um, on the back of another webinar that we'd done and uh, she was kind of asking me, you know, as a as an entrepreneur, how, how are you finding things? Are you feeling positive? And even though um, I listen to the news every, every evening and that's not very positive, um, for, from a personal aspect, uh, for, as a creative, I feel incredibly positive because it's, it's as though somebody's just torn up the rule books and we could do anything we really could it's it's there are so many opportunities and when i think about it in in terms of color there are some fantastic things that we can do and and perhaps it is as as i said after the 2008 crash perhaps it is that we're using these incredible um technologies and colors as patination or or some sort of um, embellishment or trim detail or something like that that balances out this kind of reassurance and and tradition so let me thank you for also for this uh, very interesting answer i want to give you the last question can you give me some more minutes because there is another request which is which is the color that represents and or naturally inspire trust? And I like this question, trust. Blue. Blue. 
blue blue mm -hmm. is um blue is is the color that uh over 33 percent of the world's um brand logos are blue um for this reason for instilling trust um how, oh, so how it's the favorite color yes we did a presentation in blue yeah. a few years ago and it's the, the favorite color favorite color and and it goes across doesn't it we, we looked at it and it, it goes across uh geography demographics age blue 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 is the favorite um however uh my idea of blue is, is something very different to your idea of blue um and and you know one of the um one of the areas that we look at is um color and branding and it's very interesting to uh present to a, an audience three different blues and to get them to start to verbalize uh, the different emotions or the different attributes that they understand from these blues before they know who the brand is. And um, it, it's amazing because so much of this is instinctive within us. It's just learning how to uh, identify and to communicate it. Um, so, so many of them had all the company's brand values, if not recognize the brand just by a, a pure three sets of blue. Yes, wow. I think it will be very interesting if everybody that is listening, close their eyes and think in a blue and uh, send an emotion and that you represent and then we can see it. It will be really cool actually. Right. <laughs> really cool. So uh, my dear, thank you very much. Thank you very much because you are so fascinating. You are really fascinating. And I, I really have to tell you that we have other questions and I promise we will answer because our, uh, our network is, is continuously moving on. And I also tell you you are so fascinating. You also touched at one point, which is the color and the product and the product in the virtual world. So let me tell you to the older community that in the further weeks, we want to continue to talk about these topics, to invite all the most interesting specialists. And I wish to have you again at other times, and even to be in contact with all the people that are connected today. I will tell you later on how many people, there are so many, Wow, and they will still and remain all the hour, even if we took most of the time. So thanks, Carolina. Thanks, Justine, very much. Thank you very, thank you very much, Orietta. I, as always, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, we really enjoy this opportunity. And if anybody has specific questions, we want to invite everybody to contact us. And we always will be happy to help. Of course, we, we like to share our friends with the community. So we share with all the community, our friends, which are you. And also thanks to the community to stay connected and thanks to all the team of Linea Pelle now and together. Thank you so much. It was lovely to speak to you. Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. <laughs>